Today, we're going to be looking at some of the best ways to use ChatGPT01 for SEO that most people don't know about because so many people don't realize the difference between ChatGPT and ChatGPT, which is the brand new version of OpenAI's model, OpenAI01 Preview. And today, I'm going to be running through some of the best workflows that you can use when it comes to SEO. Now, just to clarify the difference, if you look at the benchmarks for GPT01, it's actually not that different versus GPT-4 for writing content. But let me show you some of the best ways to use it and what most people don't realize. For example, let's say you've got an article that needs to be fact-checked when it comes to SEO. Now, we all know ChatGPT likes to pull a few porky subtitles. It likes to BS around a little bit and, you know, it can come up with some facts, but you're not really sure, okay, which are real, which are false, whatever. And if you're going to create content, there's no point in putting out fake news out there, right? And so let's say you've got an article like this. Now, if you use ChatGPT to generate the content, chances are there's some hallucinations in there. Now, you could verify that with ChatGPT 4.0 because you could say something like fact check my content and then just paste in the content that you have that needs to be fact checked and it will search some sites. So it will actually do some searching online to figure out, okay, which is real and which is not. The problem with that, however, is that basically ChatGPT likes to brute force answers. And what I mean by that is doesn't really care what it puts out there from what I can see. What it tends to prefer is just brute forcing the answer and it will give you an answer no matter what, right? So if you ask it to come up with a factual or statistic-based piece of content, it's going to give you an answer, even if it doesn't know what the answer is, right? And there's very little thinking about that. It's kind of like just goes full guns blazing. Now, if we compare this versus GPT-O, and we'll pull them up side by side so you can see the difference. So we've got GPT-4.0 over here, and we've got ChatGPT-01, which is the new model over here. And what you can see, we've literally used the same piece of content with the same prompt, etc. I fact checked my content. That's something else I'll come on to in terms of how to prompt ChatGPT in a minute. But you can see that ChatGPT-4.0 basically brute forces the answer it will get back to you within seconds, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the best answer, right? And so one of the biggest problems is, yes, ChatGPT 4.0 will reply quickly, but it's a brute forced answer and it doesn't really put much thought into the answer. If you compare this versus ChatGPT 01, you can actually see the process it uses to verify the accuracy and evaluate the premises and verify the key statistics inside whatever you're trying to fact check. And actually thinks about that for a relatively long period of time before getting back to you, which is super useful because now you can actually know that there's some thought behind creating the content, right? And it's not just giving you an answer for an answer's sake. And so if we compare the results side by side, you can see the analysis and the critique from ChatGPT 4.0 is a lot less in detail. It's a lot less comprehensive versus GPT-01. So you can see, for example, here, it stated the fact and then it said, right, here's a fact check, and here's what I recommend doing it. Now, if you compare this side by side, basically GPT-4.0 isn't that critical of the facts. Whereas, for example, ChatGPT-01 is like, here's a stat, here's a fact check, and here is a recommendation to make sure actually that's factually correct, and you're not BSing people out there, right? And it's basically done that throughout the rest of the facts, as you can see right here. It's even given us a conclusion, as you can see. Now, I wouldn't say ChatGPT-01 is better for writing English, but it is better for fact-checking because it has that chain of thought analysis and it can just analyze and critique content in more detail, which is good, number one, for fact-checking, number two, for avoiding hallucinations, and number three, for critically proofreading your content. Next up, if you actually check out the guidance from OpenAI in terms of how to prompt GPT-01, it's quite interesting because it actually gives some more detailed advice in terms of how to prompt it. And this is specifically for GPT-01 and for its new reasoning models. So you can see here, for example, it says actually what you should do, and I know a lot of people have been talking about super prompts and how you can actually give it very in-depth and detailed and complex prompts. But you can see here on GPT-01, on OpenAI's website, they actually recommend keeping the prompts simple and direct. And that's because the model excels at understanding and responding to brief, clear instructions without the need for extensive guidance, right? So previously, with a prompt, you might tell it in three different ways to write the content on every single line or to make it more readable 
or to change up the tone, etc. Whereas at GPT, you don't need super prompt, super complicated stuff to actually get the good outputs from it. The other thing here is as well, that actually recommends limiting the amount of context you give it, right? So for example, when I use like Claude, I might paste in a huge document and ask Claude to go through it. Same with ChatGPT 4 up. You know, one, they don't recommend doing that. They recommend keeping the content very limited to avoid overcomplicating its response. Bear in mind, the thinking time is quite slow when it comes to using the GPT-01 preview model. Now, what you can also do with GPT-01 that you previously couldn't do with ChatGPT 4. So you can paste whole workflows like you can see right here. It's still fairly simple, but you can basically turn one SAP into one single prompt, which would previously create many prompts before, right? So we can, for example, say, implement this for my SEO training site. Then it's going to do the keyword research, the content outline, and the content itself. You can see it's thinking, it's ensuring accuracy and compliance, crafting an SEO strategy, picking a keyword, mapping out the outline, creating the article, and then it actually implements from start to finish the whole workflow, which is pretty crazy. So here's a keyword research, 20, 15 ideas right there. Here's a content outline, and it's actually picked a keyword from the list. And then finally, it's actually created the whole content, right? So something that would previously take three or four attempts back and forth and three or four prompts to chat GPT can now be automated in one single click using GPT-01 preview. And it's so easy to do. Let's try another one. So this is previously a prompt that I used to use with ChatGPT in two separate parts, right, for topical maps. And so we can plug this into GPT-01 preview like so. I'll put in my niche SEO training. We'll break it down into part one and part two. And then we've basically got a topical map maker that can be implemented in one single click rather than multiple different back and forths with ChatGPT. And you've basically got a bunch of agents like talking to each other, right? So I would see each step of the process, kind of like different agents collaborating with each other to figure out the best way to implement this workflow. So for example, crafting the search intent, focusing on the keywords, looking at different SEO variations, identifying the most important topics. And then you've got the categories for your topical map, as you can see right here. And then it's actually picked one of the categories, for example, SEO training and broken down all the pages relevant to that category. And so, for example, whether it's content creation, keyword research, etc., you can all do this in one click rather than going back and forth with ChatGPT over and over again, which saves a lot of time. So thanks so much for watching. One thing I want to do before you go is just answer a bunch of the FAQs that we got from the last couple of videos about GPT-01. So let's run the, through those quickly. Someone said, how is SEO going to change when everyone is using AI to search instead of Google? This is the future of search, I see. You know, for example, you've got GPT coming to the iPhone within the next few months. The new search is AI search, right? And I think we've all been aware of, I've been aware of this and conscious of it for like the last 12 to 16 months. And, you know, if you want to rank in places like Perplexity, for example, or other AI searches, whether that's search GPT, whether it's chat GPT, whatever, publishing cross-platform is now absolutely essential. You can see, for example, GPT, if we type in something like GPT-01 SEO, you can see that my video ranks at the top of the search and it comes up with a massive thumbnail to click my content, right? And that's the way that I see most of these AI searches going, is that they tend to trust social media platforms and push those more and bigger brands versus just a website. And so really SEO is about ranking, not just in Google anymore, but ranking inside AI as well. John said, we are far from achieving AGI. And I will only consider that we've reached this milestone when the new models demonstrate critical thinking, creativity, and original concepts. I agree. I don't think this is AGI by a long way. Like this is just like a, a different way of prompting. I do think that it's a step up versus previous models, but it's definitely not AGI. However, if you look at the way this is progressing, it's getting faster and more impressive every time. Plork says, took six hours of working with an AI system to create a very basic foot rig in Mayo using Python. I mean, I'm not a coder, I'm not a developer, but I don't think this is the best model for coding. I just think that it's got extra layers of logic and reason, which is what its main use case is for. Additionally, Someone else asks, so if I have Claude Pro, isn't it worth to use ChatGPT Plus to use 01? I wouldn't switch personally, especially if you're an SEO. I think that ChatGPT is useful, but it's not Claude, right? I think if you're creating a lot of content, 
Claude is my main option. It's really my go-to AI still at the same time. And when they launch a new model for Claude, it's going to be absolutely outrageous, I can imagine. As she says, hope they add an upload file option soon. I'm sure that's coming, but again, I think you need to give it limited context to really get the most out of the response. Because if you give it like a load of context, it's going to overcomplicate the response and it's going to slow it down a lot too. So thanks so much for watching. I've shown you the differences between ChatGPT 4.0 and GPT-01 Preview. I've shown you exactly how it works step by step, what most people don't know about this model and how it can differ and how it is different versus ChatGPT 4 in terms of what you can use it for. Now, if you want to get 200 ChatGPT SEO strategies, 33 AI SEO tools, over 140 SEO tutorials, and all of my best SAPs, tips, and workflows, feel free to get my free SEO course links in the comments and description. And if you want to get a free one-to-one -one SEO strategy session where we can basically implement what's working for us when it comes to SEO, feel free to book then. Links in the comments and description. We'll show you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 bits this month, generate thousands of dollars in sales and autopilot, and we'll give you a free SEO domination plan. You'll discover the secrets of link building. We'll answer any questions that you have. You'll learn the best link building strategies for your website, how to outrank your competitors with link building, and how to 10x your SEO traffic based on what's working for us. Feel free to put that in link in the comments and description. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.